today we're just going to talk about worship guitar. What do you do when you're the only guitar player on? Just some general tips and tricks that I've picked up um, through my decade plus of being involved in worship teams and serving in churches. So the first thing you want to do when you're on team yourself as the only electric guitar player is to use delay and reverb to your advantage. Now we all love the U2 sound that the Edge has taken in and us as worship guitar players have grabbed onto um, with a vengeance and maybe killed at times. Um, but we've got to try and use delay and reverb to our advantage. So I tend to always have, um, now I've got a timeline in a big sky, but I tend to always have like two delay settings that are my go-tos and three reverb settings, a small, um, like I'm saying small, it's like a longish plate sound. Um, my medium sound would be a cloud setting on the big sky, but tamed a little bit. And then my third one is kind of like my all out big, not almost, not like a swell wash, but just a bigger reverb sound that I'll use maybe in single note parts that just carry, that create this really nice wash sound not like a swell, but just helps carry my notes so that I sound like more than just myself. Now this leads into my second tip that is create space with your parts. We're always as guitar players thinking that we need to play all the time when in reality we just probably need to just arpeggiate a chord or play a couple of notes and um, actually going along with the chords and not just playing random notes in the scale but actually following the chord structure and the melody and um, to just lift parts of the song. Realistically guys we're there to serve the song, we're there to serve the church, um, we're there to worship God through our playing so tending to be tasteful with our playing and not overplay and distract is one of the main goals. And this kind of leads into my third and fourth point, which is you tend to, we tend to need to amalgamate three or four guitar parts, depending on what song we're playing that week, into one. Now, I tend to pick the most standoutish parts, so if there's a specific chorus um, guitar line that is there, that is present, that is recognisable, um, I'll tend to play that. And then through the verses and the bridges, again, if there are specific parts, I'll play them. But if I'm also trying to be mindful of what the rest of the team are doing, if we've got a strip back team that week and you're the only person on guitar, you've got an acoustic guitar player, keys, bass, drums, you've got to figure out where you sit sonically. Um, and that's an amalgamation of what kind of guitar are you using? How do you then EQ your amp, drive pedals? How do you set your delay and reverbs to make sure that you're sitting nicely, that you're presentable in a mix um, to try and make the sound engineer's job as easy as possible. Um, one of the ways I kind of do that is I've got my Kemper, so every week when I plug in it's a consistent amp sound. The only really thing that they need to do is turn me up or down. Um, my EQs are kind of there, the profiles are set um, gig ready, studio ready, um, they always seem to, in my experience, sit perfect in a mix. Again with my overdrives I've got a couple that I use with different guitars, so if I've got my Tele or if I'm playing my Dusenberg one week or if I need to switch because I break a string, I've got settings there already that I can just go to that are great with that guitar, that I know when I pick it up, boom, I'm ready to go, there's no distraction, there's no bending down fiddling. And same with my delay and reverbs, I've kind of got two delay settings that I kind of flick between. I've got a dual delay that is um, not so heavy on the mix. Um, that kind of just fills out nice with everything. Last Sunday when I played, I kind of just used that delay setting the whole time and just tapped in the different tempos we were using. Now, when it comes to reverb, I've got three main settings that I kind of use. I've got like a longish plate, um, I've got a small ambient reverb, a cloud setting, and I've got the same setting again, but with the mix turned up a bit and a longer decay um, for when we're in big single note uh, when we need to punch it. And those settings are kind of tailored to be not too heavy in the low end because, let's be honest, sound engineers are taking all our low end out anyway so that we aren't getting in the way of the kick drum and the bass. And again, I kind of tend to use single coil guitars, my Tele, my Strat. Now I've got a Duesenberg, it's got a low output humbucker in the bridge. It 
kind of just sounds like a beefed up telly. I'm, I'm kind of not using anything dark and muddy. My amps are kind of set on the brighter side. Um, not ice picky bright, just I'm cutting low end most of the time. I'm pushing a bit of the mids and I'm kind of sculpting. With the Kemper you have a definition knob in the amp that kind of makes it brighter when you turn it clockwise and darker when you turn it anti-clockwise and I kind of tailor that to the guitars that I'm using. I kind of just kind of use the same profiles all the time. I've got some of my own um, that will be linked down below if you want to check them out or I've got some from Brian Coral and Tone Junkie that are kind of like my go-tos like AC30 sounds or the Brian Coral one I'm using is the Brian Coral Jewel KPA go-to. I think it's a Benson and a Morgan. Um, and it just sounds great. Um, it's a consistent sound for me that isn't a gained up Marshall, but if that's what you want to use, that's what you use. I'm just kind of used to using these kind of sounds, and I know um, that when I go in on a Sunday, it's kind of worry free. I'm just plugging in, I'm more focusing on my playing, I've got my pedal set, I'm just clicking and going. I tend not to need to bend down and turn knobs just because of the setup that I've got. So I hope that this video has been useful. It would mean the world to me if you would like this video, subscribe to the channel. Um, subscribing and liking means that more people get to see this video and it also helps the channel grow a little bit, which would just be great because I'm starting to ramp up making videos now, trying to do it consistently, which is always hard to do when things are picking up and getting busy, but I'm gonna try my best to get a new video every couple of weeks. And like always, guys, if you have any questions, my Instagram handle will be here. I've got another worship guitar tip video that will pop up in the corner here that will be added to this playlist, so it'll be quick and go to. And like always, thank you so much. Any questions, DM me on Instagram. Handle's been there. Leave a comment down below, and I'll catch you guys in the next one.